Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. Ghost, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Tier 8 campaign ship, the Italian battleship Giuseppe Verde. Uh, I did just get this thing yesterday on a live stream, and let me tell you right off the bat, I'm not a big fan of this ship. It's already one of those ships that I'm probably never going to play too much of. Uh, it's it's painfully mediocre at best. Uh, it's, it's got the standard 9, 16-inch guns like a lot of battleships have at high tiers, and it, uh, I'll talk about more of that in the gameplay portion, odds are, but before we get into that, let's go ahead and take a look at the upgrades and loadout, and then we're going to take a look at the commander build as well. So, for our, uh, for our upgrades and loadout, we've got aiming systems mod 1, we've got propulsion mod 2, we've got concealment systems mod, just because this ship needs it for sure. And I don't have the credits, but if I did, I would probably throw on main battery mod 3 to get that reload down quicker, because the reload on this ship is not very good. But you could always go secondary build, but for me, I'm just going to go dispersion build for the time being. For the loadout, we've got high explosive rounds, we've got AP rounds, of course, we've got dam uh, standard damage control parties, we've got four heals on my build, two radars on my build, and we are using catapult fighters. We could use spotters, but however, I don't notice the shell grouping difference at all with spotters these days. Like, battleships are just so inaccurate as it is for me, so... I'm just going to keep the fighter on, I get more value out of it, it stays up longer, and I can actually spot things with it, so... Yeah, unlike the spotter, it can't really spot much, so... Because <laughs> it only stays up for 30 seconds, so... There you go. Now for the flag we've got running, uh, we've got the Legends uh, Veteran 4 Years flag. I've been playing the game for 4 years, so I like to have this on just to show that I've been playing for quite a while. And of course, we've got the Type 9 camo that the ship comes with, and it does look like a pretty cool ship. It's, it's nothing great, it's not the greatest looking ship in the world, but it looks okay. Right? It's a little fat, I won't lie. It looks like if they got Aroma and just stretched it out and gave it bigger guns. Like, yeah, it's it's pretty weird. I don't know. That's what the ship is. It's just pretty weird. <laughs> anyway, uh, for the survivability, we've got 69,100 hit points. That's pretty low, I think, for a Tier 8 battleship. Most Tier 7s get around that, so I was hoping for a little over 70k, but hey, whatever. For the armor... You've got 19 through 410 millimeters of armor with a 27% torpedo damage reduction, which is, it's actually okay. So you can afford to take a little bit more torpedoes than per se if you were in like, I don't know, in Iowa or something, right? With only a 10% torpedo damage reduction. So it's there. It's, it's definitely nice. We do take a few torpedoes in the gameplay portion so you guys can get a little bit of an idea of how good the torpedo damage reduction actually is. Now for the artillery, here's where things get a little spicy. Uh, this thing has nine 16 inch, 406 millimeter, 50 caliber, 1940 guns. Okay, they're Italian. If I think they've got higher velocity rounds, they travel quicker. So, yeah, and they have more pen, I think, because that's kind of like the Italians thing. Uh, on my build, I've got an 18.1 kilometer range, uh, 31 second reload. Yeah, it should be 30 seconds. I don't know why it's 31. Why don't they just make it simpler and just make it 30 exact? Come on, Wargaming. Uh, for the 180 degree turn time, we've got 27.7 seconds on my build. With, a, uh, with the HE shells, we've got a 36% fire chance with a 5700 maximum HE shell damage. For the AP shells, we've got 14,459 maximum damage, of course. Now, for the secondaries, you've got a bunch of them. Uh, really, though, if you build into them, I don't think you're going to be getting a whole lot of value. But it does have SAP secondaries, so if you want to mess around with that, you can. But you've got a bunch of 90 millimeter, uh, 90 millimeter secondaries that shoot out to 6.3, and you've got a bunch of 152 millimeter secondaries that shoot out, uh, shoot out to also 6.3 kilometers as well. So you've got some secondaries for sure. It does help in those close quarter situations, especially when like a destroyer rolls up on you. Now, for the AA defense, it is pretty good. You get around an average damage for all your AA combined of about 300 if all of them are going at once. You've got some 20mm 70 Bredas, 1941s, that shoot out to 2 kilometers that do an average damage of 99 seconds. You've got some 37mm guns that shoot out to 116, uh, uh, shoot out to 116 kilometers, imagine. Uh, no, they shoot out to 3.5 kilometers with 116 average damage per second. 
And you've got some 90 millimeter guns as well uh, that shoot out to four kilometers with 162 average damage per second. And now for the maneuverability, you've got 28.8 knots, at least on my build, on my build, which is pretty good. Uh, turning circle radius, 860, pretty average for a battleship. And the rudder shift time is 16 seconds. Yeah, not good, but it's it's something. This thing feels like it turns a lot more. Maybe it's because it's a little fatter and like it's a little bit shorter. It sounds like I'm describing something, but uh, you guys can maybe take guesses. But anyway, that's what she said. Uh, for the concealment, we've got 13.2 uh, kilometers uh, by sea. We've got 11.1 by air. Two guaranteed, of course, with a 14.8 uh, kilometer detectability while firing in smoke. Take a look at the armor. The armor is pretty good on this ship. 32 millimeters bow and stern, of course, like most tier, uh, tier 7 and 8 battleships. Take away the bow armor. You guys can take a look at the torpedo protection. It's pretty good. Take away that. We've got the superstructure armor. Got a lot of it. And you do have quite a bit of superstructure. So watch out for HE spammers because the top of those secondaries are going to get absolutely plastered. And, of course, your superstructure. So keep an eye out for that. Now, the casemate armor, pretty good, obviously. Don't mind my lawnmower in the background. I'm going to quickly get through this. I'll probably pause. Main battery armor, pretty good, obviously. And, of course, here's your citadel. And the citadel has a little bit of angled slope to it. So, actually, my, my lawnmower went away. That's good. <laughs> but, um, oh, nope, he's coming back around. But, anyway, yeah, citadel, it's got a weird, like, slope to it. But, like, at close range, you could probably still get citadel. I mean, that's only how much there? Like, 25 millimeters of angled deck. Uh, slopes there. Yeah, that's not going to probably help you a lot. Get under that bow side plating. People are just going to be able to get right through that. So I, yeah, Citadel pretty exposed, but it's not like super exposed like some Italian battleships. Like this one, for example. So I don't know. At least you got a little bit of extra protection there. Now, for the commander on my ship currently, I'm running Angelo Achino, <clears throat> or I Achino. I'm running Andrew Cunningham and auto ciliacs as inspirations i've got uh my base trait of course go away we've got flammable cannoneer gyrating drill bits now one thing to keep in mind we have gyrating drill bits on and we still have like a 28.8 knot speed if we were to take gyrating drill bits off we can get up to 32 knot speed so that's something to keep in mind this is a really fast battleship even with gyrating drill bits i still get almost 30 knots of speed <clears throat> so that's really good. Uh, we've got Marksmanship. We've got Reaching Out XXL. And we are running Testudo. I could run Will the Rebuild, but I decided to, you know, take the risk and run Testudo. And it actually pays off in the gameplay portion, which we're going to go ahead and check out now. So if you guys have made it this far into the video, make sure you hit that like button. Hit that sub button if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell. Leave a comment. Tell me what you guys think of the Giuseppe Verde and... I'm going to go ahead and bring you guys over to the gameplay portion of today's video in none other than this ship right here, the Giuseppe Verde. I hope you all do enjoy it. Alrighty, so here we are in the Tier 8 Italian battleship, the Giuseppe Verde. Uh, let me tell you, like I said in the, in the very, very beginning of today's video, this ship is not like anything spectacular by any means. I, I think it's just mediocre at best. <clears throat> There's probably going to be something like that in today's title, to be honest. The Giuseppe Verde, very mediocre. I, I don't know. I, I think of the titles after the fact. When I'm uploading the video, I actually put in the title then. But, um, I, I just can't... I can't, like, say with a... Like, I cannot say that this is a good ship. It's okay. It's not great, and it's not, like, horrible. It's just, like, meh. It's your average freaking battleship. There's nothing special about this ship. Other than the fact that it gets radar, okay? Like, that's, I guess, the only thing special about this ship is that it gets radar, like, which is pretty cool. It's got 9.5 kilometer radar. It lasts pretty long as well, but, like, it's very situational, and you can only get, like, one or two shots off with it. It's, like, you know... I don't know. I just, I do not really care for the ship whatsoever. Um, but in this game in particular, we're going to try to make it work and do our best with it. Now, like I said, I don't think it's bad, but I don't think it's great. It's just like mediocre. There's really no other way of putting it. Now, we're on we're on the um, Charlie side of uh, Hotspot, and 
we are just sitting here and uh, shooting at this Odin, and he's bowing, so it's not like we're going to get a whole lot of results here, because, well, he's got a 32mm of bow armor, and, uh, well, we need to depend on superstructure hits. However, the accuracy build that I'm running is really not being accurate for me, and I'm not able to actually hit his superstructure uh, for consistent damage, which is really unfortunate. It really is unfortunate, but it is what it is, right? But at the now, end of the day, I guess, you know... Battleships are like the most inconsistent class, so they depend way too much on RNG. So, you know, shit's gonna happen like that, right? Where your shells just go everywhere but the ship. Um, it's just unfortunate. Now, we actually do get a better result there. We actually hit his superstructure and get a penetration for like 5k. There we go. We're finally getting some decent results here, but for the most part, this ship is just, like, not having it so far. Later in the game, though, things are going to get more spicy. A little bit of a spoiler alert there. So, it's not going to all be, like, you know, just me missing shots 24-7 and getting an occasional pen. No, 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 no. Don't you guys worry. There will be some special stuff at the end of the video. Don't freaking worry. But in, in, the, in the beginning of today's video, or in the gameplay portion, it's just a little slow, and there's not a whole lot happening. We're just trying to basically get a feel for these guns and pray to Jesus, you know, RNG Jesus, that these guns start working, man. Because for the most part, they're letting us down. Like, a broadside Plymouth, three overpens, really? Yeah, Hipper's like, oh, battleships are too accurate. Yeah, whatever, man. Whatever, but... Anyway, we got our back gun off on that uh, Plymouth, and of course the shells are going off to the left, and yeah, they miss, because the Plymouth decides to turn in. This time we got our front guns ready, and he's bow on, and this time, yeah, we get two overpens, one penetration, no citadel, which makes zero sense because the Plymouth has an absolute gigantic citadel, like... It's literally the the freaking Minotaur of Tier 7, and I'm not able to freaking Citadel this guy. I don't understand. Once again, we've got our back gun reloaded, and he's dead before that shell even reaches his turrets there, unfortunately. And of course, though, he gets one more shot off and hits me for 3k. Yeah, seems freaking legit, am I right? But anyway, we are in the cap now. We're contesting it. Or actually, we're not even contesting it. Looks like the Odin backed off, and we're going to be able to just sit here and cap... However, that's not fun, so what we're going to go ahead and do is charge this Odin. Now, I was talking about how earlier the torpedo protection is, you know, pretty decent. It's not great, but it's decent, right? It's better than a lot of Tier se or tier 8 and Tier 7 battleships. So, yeah, uh, just think for a second, right, about the Odin and what that ship has. It's got, obviously, some decent 305mm guns, but what else does the Odin have, ladies and gentlemen? We're talking about torpedo protection... It's not that, you know, obvious. It's not that hard, and it's, you know, painfully obvious on how you can figure this one out. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the Odin has torpedoes, and he's going to send them off his starboard side there, and all of them are going to hit except... Oh, no, yeah, every single one of them hit, and as you guys can see there, we just ate a whole rack of torpedoes sent from that Odin, and we survive. On most... Uh, we got pretty much still 25,000 hit points, so... Torpedo protection is there. And that's especially nice when you're in a brawling situation, especially with a German battleship like an Odin, right? Those ships that have torpedoes. So we were able to eat those like an absolute champ. Now, speaking of eating things like an absolute champ, can I get a shout out to that island there? The game literally said that I could lob it, but yet the shells didn't even get over except one. Really, Wargaming? Really, you're going to lie to me like that? Come on. Nonetheless, <laughs> it is what it is, right? Shit happens. Um, we've got Apollo Emilio out here as well. He's on pretty low HP, and I'm waiting for my front guns to get reloaded. I'm trying to uh, kind of predict where he's going to go. He's actually turning hard to starboard like I thought he would. And, well, we're going to get rewarded for it, and down he goes. That's two over penetrations. That's enough to finish him off. And that is our second kill of the game right there. We're up to 66,000 damage. Now... Once we get this capture zone, and once we start pushing these guys, this is when the match starts getting spicy, okay? So get your popcorn ready, because this is the part of the game where it actually starts to, you know, become pretty good for us here. We're actually able to start doing some things. Now, the buffalo here, out here, broadside at freaking you know, 14 kilometers, and of course my dispersion is worse than fucking 2019 German dispersion, but we still get two penetrations for 10,000 damage, so I guess we'll take it, right? 
we'll take what we can get with this uh, mediocre battleship here, right? Anyway, we're up to 75,000 damage with those couple penetrations. And <clears throat> we're about to have our back guns reloaded and our front guns reloaded. And we're going to be able to get a whole bunch of more shells downrange and hope to God that we get some citadels. I mean, it's a buffalo. American Heavy Cruiser, it's got a pretty big Citadel, and yet the game's like, nope, no Citadels for you, Dr. Ghost. Why would you get Citadels? That would make too much sense. <clears throat> and at this point, we're just waiting for our guns to reload. Now, we've got a Richelieu charging with us. We've got a, uh, looks like, I think it's a Destroyer in front of us that's charging with us as well. And we're going to be able to just push these guys down and take everybody out. Now, we're going to get our back guns off and wait for it, guys. Just wait for it. Wait for it. Just wait for it. Now we got our front guns off. And of course, when he's on no HP, that's when I get a Citadel, right? I couldn't get a Citadel earlier. I couldn't get a Citadel when he was on full HP. I couldn't get a Dev Strike or anything like that. But oh, once he's on no HP, that's when I get a Citadel. Am I right? Gotta freaking love it. And yeah. Anyway, Marlboro is broadside. The Marlboro is just sitting here broadside. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, he might have disconnected. But nonetheless... Uh, I will take it, and, uh, well, Marl Bros have an absolutely gigantor Citadel, and we got some pretty decent grouping there, and yeah, <laughs> three Citadels. There's a Confederate medal. If we were to actually have not overpenned him a couple times there, we probably could have dev struck him with the front guns. But, speaking of dev striking, yeah, me and this Richelieu basically dev struck that man. Richelieu finishes him off and gets a Citadel there, or two Citadels, and down he goes. And just like that, with that salvo, we're up to 137,000 damage. And the only ship left now is this main, and we are absolutely pushing him down. We're up to 147,000 damage now because we got some pretty decent results there in his superstructure. And it looks like the main is just looking off to the right side. I don't know what he's doing. He's not even moving a ship, and nonetheless, down he goes. And that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is the end of today's video little bit of a review and gameplay and stuff like that of the Giuseppe Verde. I'm not a big fan of it. Like, obviously, you can have good games in it. I'm not denying that, but it's it's okay. I mean, hey, three kills, 2.4k base XP. We'll take it. 147,000 damage, uh, Confederate, few Citadels, three kills. Hey, I'll take what I can get. But nonetheless, I hope you all did enjoy. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out. Stay healthy, as always.